Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Um, I hope you can all hear me now and see the the uh, front screen there. About thank you for joining us. Our presentation will begin shortly. Let's say the presentation has begun. Shall we? That's me. I'm Gareth Jones. Um, first and foremost, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with everybody, I just want to make sure that you can all hear me. Okay. So, on the control bar on the right hand side. There's a little area that says questions. If you wouldn't mind just dropping me a little note in there to say hello, let me know where you're tuning in from as well. It's always nice to know uh, where people are in the UK and if not the world, we've had people from all over the world tuning into the morning webinars recently. Um, but yeah, it'd be lovely to hear from you. I'm up in York myself. Um, it's, I must say, it seems to have turned quite autumnal. There's a bit of sunshine out there, but it all is looking good. Um, but yeah, as I said, it would be great to hear, you know, make sure that you can all hear me. Oh, wonderful. Miss Elizabeth Ashurst from Poland. Great. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, Madeline from Trotscher as well. Hello. Sun shining there as well. Good stuff. Great. Well, thanks very much. I'm glad everything is working OK for you guys. Um, one more question as well. If you wouldn't mind, what I'm going to do is just ask you a quick poll as well. Is this the first time you've joined us? Uh, please select one. Let us know if this is the first Rare Workers webinar you've attended or if not. Do let me know, please. We'd like to find out. Wonderful. Cheers, Will. Good to hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, sun is shining here as well, but certainly kind of a lot, uh, a lot fresher than it was a couple of weeks ago, shall we say? Wonderful. Well, thanks, everybody. I know a lot of you kind of completed the, the poll, so let's. Uh, get cracking shall we um oh yes thanks for tuning in let's find out what we're going to be talking about today um we're of course going to look at some amazing swiss holidays very sad news obviously end of last week that switzerland is now on the the red list of the quarantine countries but i really can't see it lasting that long to be honest with you i think switzerland is one of the best organized and obviously one of the richest countries in the world and they've survived the uh, coronavirus uh, year relatively well compared to nearly all other countries in Europe. So I'm sure the borders will be uh, easily open again as they are already open, but the government might see uh, sense and take away the quarantine. And um, we're going to look at some great savings as well. We've got some wonderful savings uh, sales on in place, some great discounts on holidays across Europe, not just Switzerland. And this is not just for this year, for next year, but also for 2022. That's as far in advance we are pricing our holidays and made them available. Um, also, just during the quarantine thing, we're going to look at what travelling by train in Europe is like at the moment. So what rail operators are doing uh, to make sure we're all travelling in a safely and in a healthy environment. So straight off the bat, that's uh, one saving. We've got £300 per couple on any Switzerland holiday, um, which is pretty good i'd say if you are traveling independently so solo don't worry you still get a good 150 pounds saving um if you're new to rail because it looks like a lot of you are it's great thank you very much for tuning in um if you're familiar with us sorry for going over this you've probably heard before but if you're new to us it's great to find out why people use us and why travelers do love rail because um from two days to two years our holidays go anytime any day anywhere i've touched on it already briefly but yeah all our holidays are priced out two years in advance um, guaranteeing the package price that far in advance. A small deposit is necessary to secure the holiday, and then the remaining balance wouldn't be due until three months prior. Um, but also, if you're looking to get away a little closer to departure, we touched, touched on, obviously, if you're going to Switzerland, you have to look at 14 days quarantine on your return at the moment. But who knows, towards the end of the year, you know, we're able to get a holiday confirmed, all the travel documentation packaged together and with you uh two days prior to departure freedom and flexibility we're not a group operator uh you're not traveling as part of a group it's independent travel so obviously you've got to abide by when your trains are booked for uh, when your hotels are booked for and any tours you might book etc or anything like that but that's it the rest of the time you haven't got somebody waving a flag telling you where to be at dinner and things like that um, you're up to your own devices enjoy your holiday it's your holiday at the end of the day um You've all tuned into a rail because webinar about train travel. I'm sure you'll appreciate it. it really is the most scenic way to travel and the most comfortable way to travel as well, particularly somewhere like Switzerland, where the scenery is breathtaking in parts. Uh, you get to just enjoy a comfortable seat staring out the window. Um, 
all of my dictionaries are customizable. I'm never quite sure if that is a real word in the dictionary. I keep meaning to Google it, to be honest with you. Um, essentially, what we mean is we'll look at some holiday itineraries shortly. Any of the holidays on our website as well, you can chop and change them as much as you like. You can add nights in, take nights away. Um, we've got a selection of hotels in all the major destinations, ranging from three star to five star. Uh, if you came to us and say, these are the places I want to visit, if we don't have a holiday package already featuring those destinations, we can be more than happy to put the holiday together for you based on your specific requirements. Margaret, absolutely sorry. Yes, at the end of the webinar, you will all, later on today, you will all get a recording of the webinar. So absolutely, if you haven't got time to catch up with everything as we go through or you missed the beginning, don't worry, you will get a recording or a kind of quick way to access a recording of the webinar so you can follow up then, okay? and share with anybody as well. Um, quickly touch on the maximum flexibility offer. It's an offer that's something we have in place now. I'm not sure when things stop becoming, stop being an offer and actually become um, norm. Well, I think we're all living in the new norm. So um, any reservations at the moment, up booked, and what I've been mean booked is a deposit paid up until the end of December this year are covered by this. It essentially gives you the um, ability to chop or change uh, the dates of your travel up to five days prior to departure. So if you book for a particular departure date up until five days prior to that departure, if you do need to change the dates, we can do that without any uh, amendment fee from ourselves. So we don't charge you anything for the process of changing the dates. Now that's not to say the new dates you may change to maybe a different cost. Um, if they're a better cost, we'll honor that. If it's a higher cost, it is a higher cost, I'm afraid, but there's no fee for that actual service of changing the date. Now, quickly, wherever you are in the world on a Rail Bookers holiday, um, you'll always be able to contact uh, a member of the staff, a member of our staff. We have offices in London, um, just north of Boston, a place called Beverly, Laguna Hills, south of Los Angeles, and Toronto, Canada, and Sydney, Australia. Everyone's working from home at the moment, but it doesn't sort of have a knock on our services at all. So essentially, wherever you are in the world, whatever time, whatever day it might be, you can contact a member of the team any emergencies that you may have. Uh, just to reiterate, sorry, yes, there will be access to a recording of the webinar emailed to everybody later on today, which you can view, but also share via email as well. But you'll be able to access a recording of the webinar later on today. Here's that map that you can download that it mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. On the right hand side and that control bar, if you see an area called handouts, if you click on there, you'll be able to download this map. Um, you just kind of right click and say download or save, and then it's yours to print off. It's quite a fun thing to stick on the fridge or something in the kitchen to kind of plan your holiday. All those different kind of lines are sort of different scenic lines, different rail operators. It says it there, but it's kind of obvious really. We take the mystery out of rail travel. We really do, we make it easy. Um, there's also quite a rudimentary Swiss map as well, which I think is quite fun. If you do look at any normal sort of rail map of Switzerland, it, it's quite busy. Um, it, Switzerland is fantastic for train services, it really is. But these are the sort of the key lines that we're going to be looking at today and we feature in our holiday packages. Um, you said you've got the Golden Pass, the Glasser Express, the Benina Express and the Simplon Pass for the key scenic journeys that we'll be looking at later. Now I mentioned us taking the, the mystery out of uh, rail travel. We do, we're a kind of direct partner of all these rail uh, operators throughout the world. Um, obviously, predominantly, we're going to be looking at look, SBB today, who are the Swiss rail operators, uh, Train Italia as well, the Italian rail operator. But what are they doing uh, to maintain a safe environment? Well, it's changing, as I'm sure you'd appreciate, week by week, really. Um, on the whole, though, of course, everyone's requiring facial coverings in stations and on trains for passengers and staff. Um, Again, it, I think what's interesting here is you head out to Eastern Europe and there's no, there's, there isn't any, there's no sort of facial coverings or anything. And, and the COVID-19 kind of rate is, is a lot lower than it is in Western Europe. So amazing, really. Um, stopping the sale of food and drink on board trains. Again, it depends where you are. So in the UK, of course, um, I think they are gradually opening up serving coffee and refillable cups. But in France and Italy, the buffet cars are still closed. If you go to Germany, etc. You still get a cooked meal in the buffet car and enjoy drinks, etc. In Switzerland, uh, you can still get food and drink. So we'll look at the Glacier Express shortly. 
Uh, you could get a cooked meal on board the Glacier Express, freshly cooked and served to your seat. You don't have to get up and queue or anything. Changing seat configuration and allocation on board to allow for social distancing, of course, less obvious if you're traveling in first class because there are generally uh, fewer people in first class, so fewer seats available, no need to sort of enforce any changes. On the whole, most rail operators are doing a one-way system. So there's a carriage of the train, one door at one end will be the, uh, the, the door to get on and the other door at the other end of the carriage will be the door to get off. So you haven't got to kind of brush past other passengers, etc. I think one thing that's quite interesting in Italy, for example, is all passengers on the sort of the high speed trains, the Freccia Genta, the Freccia Rosses. At the moment, you all get an onboard bag, very much like a, an overnight bag, a little pack you get on an overnight flight many years ago with a, um, a mask, hand sanitizer, and little cover to put over the cover of the headrest of your seat as well. So it's all completely clean. Um, everyone sort of increased their cleaning and sanitation, um, you know, cleaners on board the train, cleaning as you go, and contactless ticket control. Uh, generally, uh, you have the ability with pretty much all rail operators now to have just an e-ticket, so on your phone, so you just wave your phone or your tablet at the, at the conductor and he'll scan it from afar with a little scanner. Um, but if you haven't got those capabilities, don't worry, we can still print off the, the documentation for you and you can still have the paper, that's fine. But yeah, those, uh, that's all possible now. I think just coming back to the food and drink on board trains, it's really uh, a great point to reiterate here as well, is that one of the joys of traveling by train is that the you don't have to, you know, there's no real kind of concerns about taking food and drink on board the train. Uh, you can take a picnic with you, you know, take some sandwiches. Um, the Marks and Spencers just over the way from the uh, Eurostar terminal in St Pancras is now open again so a great place to pick up some sandwiches and things even a bottle of wine for example if you're lining up a big a long train journey across, across Europe or something you can enjoy a bottle of wine on the train while enjoying the beautiful view out the window. Now every year I should say every normal year all of our staff get to go on one of our holidays um, all the staff I mean from all offices as well so it's quite an undertaking in terms of organizing it but I think it's great just worth of noting that it means that anybody you do speak to at Railbookers really know what they're talking about. It's where we've got some of our best feedback in terms of improving our holidays. Um, I think it's just great to know that, you know, so the sales guys, even the people, even the, the accounts in the offices right down the end, uh, they all know what they're talking about, they've experienced what our clients experience. Shall we have a look at some holidays? I hear you cry, let's, let's, let's do it. So, uh, first and foremost, Switzerland's lakes and mountains, our most popular holiday for Switzerland. Um, you can see here it's including a flight, so a flight to Geneva and flight back from Zurich. Now we have two different plans with the flights, starting price is just under £1,400 per person based on two people sharing. You can take the train if you'd rather, um, if you want to completely avoid flying, absolutely no problem, you can take the train direct from London to Paris, then Paris to Geneva, and from Zurich to Paris and Paris to London. That's absolutely feasible and very easy for us. Um, the flight, so of it, you're not tied down to going from a particular airport, you're from any UK airport, okay? So don't worry about having to come to London from a further afield, any flight. Either way, this holiday is fantastic. It's a, a sort of tour de force of the three key scenic train journeys in Switzerland. You've got the Golden Pass, the Glacier Express and the Benigno Express. Okay, you've got a night in Montreux, beautiful lakeside setting on Lake Geneva. Got two nights in Interlark and in between two lakes. Uh, trip up the Jungfrau, the highest railway station in Europe. Uh, two nights in Kur, the oldest town in Switzerland. I mean, I call it a town. It's probably a city. It's the the kind of um, it's the capital of Graubünden, this region of Switzerland, but it's small, as I'm sure you'd imagine. Inclusive of in all our holiday packages, so the travel highlighted, so the flights included, all the train travel in Switzerland included. Hotel accommodation. Now, hotel accommodation would include breakfast as well, generally ranging from three star to four star for the packages. But as I said, in all the key destinations, we've got hotels ranging from three star up to five star as well. So if you're traveling for a special occasion, we've got options for you as well. Uh, and reservations on the trains as well. So in Switzerland, it's quite interesting. You don't have to make a reservation on all trains. 
most trains between the major cities you just jump on and off as you want they're very regular as you'd imagine switzerland very good rail network the scenic trains i say inverted commas the scenic train the glacier express the banana express and the golden pass you require a seat reservation as well which is only limited departures of these trains our holiday packages include all those costs so the golden pass probably the least known out of the three key trains in switzerland um it's lovely it really is it's um, there's two actually two different golden pass type trains there's the uh panoramic which is this one as you see here um it's kind of a normal carriage but also they have the panoramic window carriages as well as you can see in the insert in image there there's also a classic golden pass as well which only has about two departures uh a day in one in either direction and that's very much sort of a belle epoque uh british pullman style classic kind of train which is very very nice as well um but it's a more of the onboard experience than the actual scenery itself the train runs from montreux up to uh interlaken and then on to lucerne is the actual golden pass line um the scenery is very different. It's quite different to the other, the Glacier Express and the Boeing Express. A bit more gentle in many parts, as you see, rolling green pastures, uh, big mountains, of course, in the background and things like that. It's coming through the area of Switzerland that's the most that produces the best cheese and chocolate. Um, you can imagine lots of cowbells are heard around here as you as you travel through. Um, fairly gentle in part but beautifully seen. Coming out of, of Montreux, it comes a very steep incline from the side of the lake uh, up into the, the kind of higher plains, which is beautiful, breathtaking. There is uh, a commentary on board the train as well. It's very interesting because it changes from French to German as the train passes from the French speaking area of Switzerland to the German speaking area of Switzerland. It's also repeated in English, so don't worry, um, but it just proves the sort of international nature of Switzerland as a country, certain areas speaking certain different dialects and languages now the glacier express probably the most famous of the three i'd say um the slowest express train in the world it markets itself as and it is fairly slow <laughs> and just so they enjoy the amazing scenery as the name suggests you're going through past glaciers um i think it goes through sort of 90 odd tunnels and over two nearly 300 bridges which is pretty unbelievable really and um, the full length of the journey is from zermatt to san moritz it's around about eight and a half hours on the switzerland lakes and mountains you're doing the most scenic kind of two-thirds of it you go from a place called brig right in the heart of switzerland through to Kur, which is the most mountainous part of it as well um, the Glacier Express is the only one of the trains which is seasonal and what I mean by that is that there's a little window well it's the whole of November um, where the train doesn't run uh, just simply the geography of the track you can't run a direct train over it that, that part so they don't run the Glacier Express but it is it's truly breathtaking it really is so you can order food on board as mentioned previously a freshly cooked meal in first and second um, you can pre-book it beforehand but you're best to wait till you're on board there's no kind of financial difference in terms of paying on board and plus you get more choice if you wait till you're on board than pre-booking it as well uh, as you can see panoramic carriages so you get to enjoy the amazing view all the way around as i said you've got first class you've got second class you've also got excellence class as well which is probably the most luxurious daytime train experience in Europe, if not the world, really, the most sought after window seats in Switzerland, they say, because in the carriage, and there is only one carriage per departure, as you can see by the image uh, there, that the, all the seats are window seats. So there's just two seats opposite one another on either side. There's only around about 24 seats in each carriage. So really sort of limited availability. Private bar exclusive for the kind of excellence class carriage as well three course lunch wine local drinks all included you get an ipad to enjoy the view the, the kind of scenery and the story of what you're traveling through all your luggage is taken care of so you're not going to kind of stack it above your head or under your feet or anything like that um something really special as i said if it is a special occasion you're looking to travel far 
you can't beat that for a travel uh, a, a journey by day at all and now the third is the Benino Express which is my favorite um, it's often seen at the top of many people's most favorite or most scenic train journeys in Europe if not the world and rightly so it is really special um, you're traveling from some of the highest peaks in the Alps this region called Graubunden in the southeast corner of Switzerland um, you say crystal blue lakes but they're more sort of turquoisey magical alpine lakes huge alpine peaks uh, and it drops down going over amazing it shares the uh, land vessel viaduct that viaduct we saw in the glacier express image it shares that with the glacier express drops down it goes across amazing things like the brusio viaduct which is this where it's kind of a corkscrew 360 degrees with the train goes down if it went to any speed it would be a roller coaster but it doesn't see it looks so much like a little toy town in some parts as well um and the train drops down into this beautiful palm tree lined valley in northern italy uh into a little town called tirano it's lovely and then you've got a couple of hours there there's a beautiful old church there's a couple of tavernas that are set up or a bowl of pasta or a pizza and a glass of house red or something and then you take the train back as well for the day trip the landscape takes on a different personality in the afternoon light as it does in the morning so it's very different um really is a lovely day just spent traveling by train but the scenery is breathtaking in parts really is so that's switzerland's lakes and mountains now something slightly bigger and a bit more scenic switzerland has it still has the golden pass the Benin express the glacier express the young frau railway but also rather than staying in kur which i said that's chur it's the capital of grand bundan um it's the oldest town in switzerland that the romans settled there it's still got vineyards uh, which is amazing considering how high it is um staying in samaritz two nights in samaritz are you doing the full length of the glacier express through to zermatt Two nights in Zermatt, here you've got a day trip on the Gornagrat Cog Railway. Overnight in Montreux, again, one of my favourite places. Uh, the Golden Pass up to all the way, the Golden Pass line up to Lucerne. You've got three nights in Lucerne. Uh, from Lucerne, you do the day trip on the Jungfrau again. You also do a Mount Pilatus day trip as well. As you can see, it starts uh, from Zurich fly into Zurich and fly out it doesn't have to be from Birmingham I'm not sure why it says Birmingham there forgive me <laughs> you can have it from Birmingham from London from Manchester wherever you got flights to Zurich the great thing about the airports in Switzerland as well Geneva and Zurich is you've got really big train stations so you can get pretty much anywhere in Switzerland very easily from the train station um so I said yeah so Starting price just under £1,950 per person. That's based on two people sharing. If you are traveling solo, we do have the prices. Give us a call. We can discuss those prices uh, separately. As I said, so it is a bit bigger than seeing uh, Switzerland's lakes and mountains. New destinations, I mean, Interlaken, we'll have a look at shortly. Uh, great base for exploring the area in between two lakes. It's Interlaken. Uh, Zermatt historic sort of ski destination but car free so you just get it around with a horse and carriage or a golf buggy um but under the shadows of the Matterhorn mountain the iconic Matterhorn mountain San Moritz uh obviously one of the original sort of um packaged holiday destinations uh historically part of the grand tour of course as well the home of winter sports that's where a lot of the winter sports were were first organized as well beautiful lakeside setting beautiful all year round as well particularly in the summer uh, spring and summer we've got some beautiful wild flowers up around in the mountains i've never seen so many uh, fur coat shops in one place on time and place but, you know and montreux montreux um synonymous with the jazz festival of course but so much more than that obviously it does have a big musical heritage and um, you've got chillon castle just 20 minutes walk around the lake or an easy boat ride around beautiful medieval castle right on the lake uh you've got vineyards here as well it's so easy to take a bus just five minutes out of town and all the the vineyards the the wineries here the door open doors open so you can just sort of 
knock on the door, have a tasting or three, and you know they're set up for nibbles, local cheeses, etc. Oh yeah, Munster is beautiful, it really is. And a couple of the mountain railways. So first of all, the, the Gornagrat, uh, which is it might be the oldest. I oh, know it's not. That's um, Riggy, that's something else, but it's been open since 1898, so it's incredibly old. Um, 33 minutes to the top of the Gornagrat Plateau. From here, you've got amazing views, of course, of the Matawan Mountain, but of the whole of the area as well. Um, amazing. Up here, you've got some great wildlife as well. You've got some ibex uh, and marmots running around wildly as well. There is a, a cafe bar up here as well, so you can have some lunch, a bit of fondue or something. Um, the young frau as well, which is easy, it's easily done from Interlaken in this holiday. You're taking the quick journey from Lucerne down to do it as well. But the highest railway station in Europe. On a clear day, you've got views as far as France, Germany, Italy. It's the most obvious sort of candidate for the, the, the key, you know. The familiar phrase the journey is more rewarding than the destination as well as well and it is it's it's the journey up there is about three different trains up and then three different trains back down the mountain the final train actually goes into the mountain that's where the train station is inside the mountain and you can see there in the bottom right hand image that's what was at the top and you've got a great glacier at your feet the biggest glacier in europe um there's a ice statue gallery inside again there's a restaurant here so you can have some lunch truly breathtaking views as i said and so rewarding taking the train up and the train down if you're coming up via lauterbrunnen you get to see one of the biggest waterfalls in europe as well amazing views going up coming back down you come back down via grindelwald of course the trains are flexible here so you don't have to reserve um, you can jump on any train. They're round about every train every 20 minutes or so. So you can have a wander around Grindelwald or Lauterbrunnen, which are both beautiful kind of alpine villages. End of this year, they're opening a brand new leg as well, which is going to speed up the, the, the journey back down. So for the one leg, rather than taking the train, you can take the equally as rewarding cable car down to Grindelwald, which kind of speeds it up a little bit because it can get quite kind of after being that high you can get quite tired you know and coming traveling back down the mountain the journey down is around about sort of two hours in total an hour and a half two hours it can get quite tiresome but i mean a cable car just speeds it up that bit a little bit more and amazing views of course um but also you've got mount pilatus so mount pilatus is uh it's well mount pilatus cog railway is the steepest cog railway in the world um it depends how you do the Mount Pilatus day trip, what time of the year. So during the spring, summer, you take around about 40 minute scenic cruise on Lake Lucerne, beautiful. And that's where you, uh, Altmachstad is the place you get off at. And that's where you pick up the Cog Railway train, which goes to the top of the mountain, as you see, it's steep, just incredibly steep and rewarded with some breathtaking views all the way up to the top of the mountain. At the top of the mountain, you find this and these sort of views amazing it really is um there's a there is a hotel up here that we work with that only has around about 34 rooms and the great thing about mount pilatus and the trains etc they all stop running around about half past five so from 6 37 ish onwards it's the only the people staying in the hotel at the top of the mountain <laughs> which is amazing just consider the views that the sky at night that high up the views looking down over the lakes and the whole of the swiss alps pretty much you've got lucerne is just tucked oh let me just lucerne is just tucked down here so, I've seen the there. so lucerne is just down there so in the evening you can see the lights of lucerne split up the hotel is just over here um and I said, you know, if you're staying at the hotel, it's such a lovely place just to spend perhaps one night. You get a kind of amazing three course meal, all included in a beautiful old historic kind of um, dining room as well. And then you get to enjoy the views, walks and the views. Um, there are some lovely walks up here as well, up to the top of the peak up here. And of course, around here. 
some beautiful kind of walks we had. Mount Pilatus is a wonderful legend of it being the mountain of a sleeping dragon inside the mountain as well. It's not particularly volcanic or anything, but just it kind of relies on the on the his, the uh, legend of it quite a bit. On the way back down, so if you're just going for the day trip, which is still amazing, and on the way back down, you come down this way. So from here down here. So the train comes in here. And then you're coming down this side of the mountain towards Lucerne. And that's via a cable car like this. There you go. Um, I'll get rid of those images, sorry. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so you come to have a cable car, uh, which is exciting. And again, it's truly rewarding and beautifully scenic as well. So there's one cable car down to a, a tiny little place where you change onto another cable car, uh, which goes down again and finally into Lucerne. So that's during the summer, you take the train up and the cable car down. During the winter, it's just too cold to run the cog railway up. So you can just go up the mountain this way and back down the mountain this way as well. So you still get to access top, still get the amazing views. You just don't get to experience the cog wheel really steep, very, very steep train. Um, Absolutely beautiful up there, particularly at night, as well as said, because the, the, the sky at night that high up, the stars just look like kind of little light bulbs dangling down. It's peace and quiet. Beautiful. Now, I so said that's all based from Lucerne and in the Swiss um, scenic Switzerland holiday, you've got three nights in Lucerne. One of my favourite places. It really is. It's obviously you've got the beautiful chapel bridge, medieval wooden bridge just outside the train station going into the old town such a great base for exploring the Alps and um, it's on Lake Lucerne which is amazingly beautiful in the summer you can swim in Lake Lucerne um, you've got Mount Pilatus that we've looked at you've have other mountain excursions that's of Mount Rigi the Queen of the Alps as it's called that's the oldest uh, mountain excursion in Europe Mount Titlis with a huge rotating gondola uh, so 80 people on board this thing that rotates 360 degrees as it goes to the top of the mountain. Um, numerous other mountain excursions from here as well. The old town on the other side of the bridge here is gorgeous, as you imagine. It's German speaking, so it does have that sort of German feel to it. Cobbled streets, some of the best fondue in the world, I'd say, around here as well. They've got, if it's raining, they've got a very good transport museum as well, which is really fantastic. Not just Swiss trains, but a huge, vast array of different forms of transport, and et cetera, really quite fun. But yeah, Lucerne is a wonderful base, really is. Just so you're looking to stay somewhere for a, a longer period of time, you can't do much better than Lucerne. If you're looking for something a bit shorter, um, classic Classio and Benina Express, you can't go wrong with it. Starting price just under £1,400 per person. Uh, so here you've got train travel out and a flight home. Again, if you want to kind of change it to other way, you can do that. Again, if you want to add nights on, take nights away, add on other destinations, you can do that. Uh, so here, yes, you've got a trip to uh, Lund, Paris, train stations in Paris. And then a direct train from Paris to Basel, and then from Basel, a direct train down to Interlaken, two nights in Interlaken. The Glacier Express, that scenic second, uh, final two thirds of it through to Kur for two nights and a day trip on the Benina Express, and then back up to Basel for a flight back. So that's staying in Switzerland itself. Uh, a lot of our most popular holidays are via the Alps, um, Venice via the Alps, Rome via the Alps, Florence via the Alps, uh, Cinque Terre via the Alps, the Amalfi Coast via the Alps. They all follow the same routing, which is Lund, Paris, Paris to Geneva, really quite a scenic journey, come through the Jura Mountains there, very pretty. Overnight in Geneva, four star uh, corner bin hotel just over the road from the main station in Geneva, so really easy. You arrive there about six o'clock, walk over the road, check in, drop your bags off, then go off and have a wander down by the lake in the old town. Um, the next morning, around about half past seven in the morning, it's an early start, but you've got a direct train here from Geneva through to Venice. Uh, the first part of the journey is by the Simplon Pass. This is where, well, all, the whole route of the journey, sorry, this is where the Venice Simplon Orient Express gets the Simplon bit from in its name. It's this historic route through the Alps. Um, 
beautiful, really beautiful. Uh, you're kind of passing through the Alps and you're passing around Lake Maggiore through Milan and then past, kind of past the shores of Lake Garda before dropping down into Venice. <laughs> Excuse me, three nights in Venice here as well. You've got a walking tour and a gondola ride as well. The walking tour in Venice is brilliant. You're actually led by a Venetian. So somebody born and bred in Venice. Uh, they know the stories, they know the, the, the alleyways, they know the, the history of all these beautiful buildings. And then a flight back from Venice. If you don't want to fly back, no problem. The most convenient and nicest route, we think, really, is by Turin. So have a night, direct train from Venice to Turin, have a night in Turin. It's a lot smaller than many main big cities in, in Italy. Um, great restaurants. Some great galleries as well if you do stay for another night. Uh, but then train about 10 o'clock in the morning up to Paris, change in Paris. You're in London for about half past seven in the evening. You know, great journey time. Uh, I said the Simplon Pass, you're kind of dropping down from the Alps into sort of northern Italy. Um, then we haven't got any images of kind of where it passes, where the train passes by a little majority, but beautiful train journey, beautiful at any time of the year as well. Um, the train runs throughout the year. There's some more holidays as well. Montreux City Break. So if you are looking to just stay in one place uh, for an extended time, do some day trips and things. I mentioned Lucerne, but Montreux is equally as good as well. You've got Lake Geneva in front of you there. We mentioned the vineyards that you can access. There's a very easy mountain railway uh, out of Montreux as well, called the Rochers de Ney. Open all year round, but during the spring, summer, it's most rewarding with the um, wild flowers up there. Uh, amazing. If it's a special occasion you're travelling for, you can't beat the Venice Simplon Orient Express. Sadly, they won't be running any trains this year at all, but starting again March till November next year. Combine it with the Benina Express. The holidays we've looked at include a day trip on the Benina Express, of course, but for the train that goes into Italy, you can, of course, just continue on from Italy or vice versa. Here, you take the Venice Simplon Orient Express from London to Venice overnight amazing just experience to be on board such a beautiful train three nights in venice and then up to san moritz in one day so you have venice to milan milan to tirano you pick up the Benina express heading north um two nights in san moritz to relax by the lake and then just to train up to zurich airport with a flight back as well just over four thousand pounds per person and then the bernice oberland so perhaps the most popular area of Switzerland, uh, the Bernice Oberland, sort of central mountainous region. You've got flights into and out of Zurich, two nights in Bern, three nights in Wengen, which is a tiny small alpine village just north of, um, well, not north, just up the mountain from Interlaken. Uh, staying in Wengen makes the Jungfrau day trip a lot shorter as well, a lot easier to get to the top of the mountain. But this again, there's no cars up here, cowbells, beautiful. Really lovely, peace and quiet, spectacular view, some great walking to be had up here as well. And two nights in Lucerne, where you do the day trip on the Mount, up to Mount Pilatus as well. All that just under £1,300 per person. So please tell me, what destinations are you considering for your next holidays? Switzerland uh, up there, and also... Let me know what you're looking to travel for. Is it a special occasion you're looking to travel for? Or please do let me know. I know we've been through, it seems it's in quite a lot of uh, holiday different packages there. And we do have such a huge array of holidays in Switzerland. Um, but again, if there's any particular destinations or combinations of things you're looking to see that we haven't covered yet, do let us know, please. It truly is full of some unforgettable experiences switzerland uh, the train journeys themselves are great the mountain rails are great but the destinations also have so much to offer so much beautiful food um yeah it's an amazing place so as you say, I'm, I'm a big fan wonderful thank you so here's some more of the offers as well. We mentioned Switzerland, save up to £300 per couple. Scotland as well, if you're looking to stay a bit closer to home, about £300 per couple. Uh, on a holiday, four nights or more. Uh, Vienna, if you stay, uh, go on a holiday, four nights or more, including Vienna, 
save up to 300 pounds per couple now if you offer to italy uh for seven nights or more so not just seven nights in italy but combined seven night holiday uh you can save up to 400 pounds per couple and then we have a great holiday with the italian lakes and swiss mountains which if you were to take that you would save up 500 pounds per couple These are some of the awards and uh, recognition that, that we've been we've had over the past few years. Some of the publications said nice things about us. We're of course very happy indeed, and we'll always talk about the British Travel Awards we won at the end of last year, uh, the best overall rail holiday company. And if you haven't had a look at our website, please do. It's the best place to get more information. Uh, destinations is always a good first place to start. Obviously, see a list of all the three thousand destinations we feature holidays. And holiday types, uh, you've of course got sort of scenic trains, sleeper trains, uh, lakes and mountains, blue trains, red trains, that sort of thing. All different, huge great list of different train options. And if you've enjoyed this, there's more. Uh, next week, we've got the best of Italian lakes uh, from next Tuesday and Thursday. And the two weeks time, we're doing luxury rail experiences. So if you're looking at VSOE, of course, but some other private trains and luxuries services around the world and now questions please thank you very much for all kind of uh sticking in there listen i hope you found it helpful please do let me know of any questions you do you might have as i said later on today you will all be getting a link with a recording uh to the webinar so you will be able to sort of uh come back to it but also email it on to any friends if you wish to do that as well Ah, oh, Terry, good question. The best time to travel to Switzerland? Yeah, I, I think it's an always a, it's always a great question. I think because you know some people's best time is other people not able to, other people's best times. Um, May to October is a very popular time to travel. Of course, uh, September is particularly particularly busy. Weather wise, I think that's the great thing about Switzerland is that throughout the year there's no preferred time. You know, during the winter, a lot of destinations are quite ski orientated. Zermatt and Samaritz, for example, but if you look at sort of March, April, uh, when you're coming out of the sort of the heavy winter time, you're still going to have good, perhaps have good snowfall. That's perhaps a good quieter time to travel, for example. But the reason times like September, et cetera, are high season is such they're the most popular times to travel. Can you take dogs, Alex? Good question. Not on the Eurostar um so that cuts short it depends which country in terms of other rules etc but on the Eurostar first and foremost sadly not they don't allow you to take dogs Andy no we don't take bookings online um you, 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 best way is to just give us a call um we do have a function on our website now we can kind of arrange to a time for somebody to call one of us to call you um but all bookings are done by the phone that way because we need to check the actual live availability of most things even far in advance to make sure we get the hotels but also just to make sure any questions you have are answered correctly and have all the information you need I'm afraid we don't actually, Alex. No, as I said every country is very different in terms of the, how they handle dogs on board trains. Um, France are a little bit more um, lenient, I believe, but elsewhere in Europe are very different. But no, it's not something that we kind of feature heavily. Yeah, no, I agree. It is a shame. Uh, Will, great question in terms of sort of the refund policy, etc. I mean, we're following the ABTA guidelines, of course we are. Um, the sort of credit notes are readily available, etc. Um,
Yeah, Terry, exactly. So if you wanted to do the um, Switzerland Lakes and Mountains, you've been to Geneva before, no problem at all. We can start that in Zurich for if you'd rather. So fly out to Zurich, do it that way around. Absolutely. Yeah, again, that's that kind of customizable side of things we can get in there. There's no charge for changing a trip either. So if you want to look at uh, adding a night on or changing a part of it, yeah, there may be a different kind of pricing factor involved. So a hotel may be more in cost or less for example, but we don't charge a set amount to make any charges to the holiday. No, 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 not at all. Right, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, when you're all ready, we're ready. We are, that's all of us lot uh, around the world. Thanks very much for joining me. I'm glad you've enjoyed this and I really hope you've have enjoyed it and taken away all the information you got. Um, if you need any help, don't hesitate and give us a call 0203 780 2222. Have a good day. All the best now. Bye bye.